From child actress to teen TV sensation to bona fide rock star, Taylor Momsen has been in the public eye since she was two. Over the years, her growth has been less of a transformation and more of a journey to revealing her true self. In her first face-to-face -face interview in years, I got a chance to spend some time with the singer-songwriter and talk about life, loss, and all that lies in between. It's tonight's Prime Playlist. On a stage in Toledo, Ohio, Taylor Momsen, lead singer of The Pretty Reckless, is back at it in more ways than one. Just nine shows into the band's first tour in five years, it's like no time has passed. But ask Taylor, and she'll tell you she's lived a lifetime in those five years. Tremendous success, coupled with deep, painful depression. Well, first of all, thank you for doing this. Well, thank you for having me. This is also her first face-to-face -face interview in five years. Now 28, Taylor began her life in front of the camera shortly after she learned to walk. My mom's a good cook. This is how you make shake and bake. I was very talkative. I think my modeling agent said she should go on auditions because she's very chatty. Her big break at the age of five. Where are you Christmas? Why can't I find you? Adorable Cindy Lou Who in How the Grinch Stole Christmas, starring right alongside Jim Carrey. Then years later, an even bigger break. I thought this was an emergency. A fashion emergency. Landing the role of Jenny Humphrey on the CW teen drama Gossip Girl. I don't think I need you as my mentor anymore. Just a teen herself at the time, fame came fast and wasn't always fun. I was getting photographed as my character and being put in the tabloids as Taylor Momsen's wearing this, Taylor Momsen's doing this. And so I got very frustrated with that. So when she was old enough, Taylor took control of her life and went from teen star to teen rock star. No more acting. Make me wanna die. Her 2010 debut album, Light Me Up, a bit jarring for some who knew her as a child actress, though she seemed to embrace it at the time. Does what I'm wearing seem to shock you? Well, that's okay. Cause what I'm thinking about you is not okay. Still, there was much more buzz about what she was wearing than what she was writing. It's the songs, those last forever, and that's what I put all my heart and soul into and slaved over, and no one's even mentioning that. But the Pretty Reckless pressed on. Taylor and longtime writing partner, guitarist Ben Phillips, continued to write. The band's sophomore album was a hit. The song Heaven Knows went platinum. Oh, Lord, heaven knows we belong way down below. Sing it. Then in 2016, releasing Who You Selling For with hits like Take Me Down. Death, a common theme through much of her music, and it was death that stopped the rock powerhouse in her tracks. Black hole sun, won't you come? On tour with Soundgarden at the peak of her career. Rocker Chris Cornell died last night while on tour in Detroit. His representatives say Cornell's death was sudden and unexpected. Cornell, a rock idol for Taylor, found in his hotel room, death by suicide. I wasn't prepared for it. Like, I, I didn't know how to kind of mentally wrap my mind around it. Soon after, the band would cancel the rest of the tour. Time off needed to grieve and regroup. I was starting to write some songs, and I, was, I called Cato, and uh, I said, hey, man, like, I have some stuff. I don't know if it's for a record or for what, but, like, we, we all need to get out of this funk. Taylor calls Kato Kandwala her best friend, her family, her musical soulmate. It's hard to overstate his role in her life, a huge part of the band's success, too. 11 months after Cornell died, just as they got back into the studio, Kato was killed in a motorcycle crash. I fell into a very, very dark, deep hole of depression. You had thoughts? Like you, they, at that point, that wh why bother living? Why bother trying? I think I was like, everything I love is dead. What's the point? A question she would ask over and over while isolating herself from the band and from the world around her. And it just it feels like that's that's where you live now. That's where you are. Um, there's no light. At the end. There's no there's no light at the end of the tunnel, and and if there is, you can't see it. 
But slowly, she began putting much of what she was feeling into her latest album, Death by Rock and Roll. Writing as she has done for the better part of 15 years with Phillips. I would almost go so far to say as I think it might be our, our best accomplishment to date. Um, it is. In it's one it's way. much like the first record. The first it is. record it's very, was. It's very inspired. Was very inspired. Inspiration so desperately needed. The irony, Taylor says, death by rock and roll might have saved her life. I think anyone who's struggled with depression or substance abuse or both will can attest that when you're in it, it seems like this inescapable place. A place so many have been to, and tragically, some never come back from. How would you tell someone to begin to live again? Oh man, that's a big question. And the answer, at least for Taylor, is complicated. But the reason she's sitting here today. It's never going to go away. It changes you as a person. And, but what it will do is it will turn into a scar. And it will heal. The healing for Taylor continues, moving forward, touring again, and just two hours before taking the stage in Toledo, even indulging a longtime fan playing her song, Just Tonight. Laughing, living, and creating again. Inviting us to a secret video shoot in Brooklyn. Ready to play the song. For a song off the new album. Tonight! 12 years after her first album, her love of music and performing is as strong as ever. And it feels so good to be here. Yes, she has a few more of those scars, she describes. Scars that are now just part of who she is. Coming full circle, writing about love for a song two members of Soundgarden helped record. And if you or anyone you know is in a dark place, struggling like Taylor has, it is so important to hear her now say this. There is light at the end of the tunnel. It does get better. Just wait it out, baby steps, and you will get to the other side. And that's a wonderful thing. That is such an important message. It can be hard to see hope when you are in such a dark place, she mentions. If you or someone you know is struggling, you are not alone and there is help available. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline provides 24 seven free and confidential support. The number 1-800-273-8255. It's right there on your screen. And of course, our thanks to Taylor, Ben and the band, The Pretty Reckless on tour now. That video coming soon. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.